Okay, we're just going to do some examples on um, scalar formulation, moment of a force, scalar formulation. Okay, now I'm just, just going to look at these uh, problems just like this. Okay, so recall that uh, the moment of a force is equal to what? The moment of a force is equal to FD. Okay. But remember that this is the magnitude. What about the direction? How do we determine the direction? Well, in two-dimensional space, remember that we are looking at the if we if we have the right hand right hand rule. Okay? We're looking at the curl of the fingers. Curl of the fingers. Okay? So if we just waiting for that to focus there. So if we have a force here of 100 Newton applied to this beam, and we're looking at that point O, right? Then we put our fingers in the direction of the force, and we curl them towards the point O. We curl them towards point O. And then it gives us an indication of if we apply a force to the beam there, it will cause a clockwise rotation of this beam about point O. All right? I hope that makes sense. So we have a force. What is the magnitude? The magnitude will be 100 times 2, 100. And what is the moment arm? The mo this is very simple because the moment arm in this case is literally, the, is, is literally that distance because we have the line of action of the force and we have a perpendicular beam here. So this force is being applied to the perpendicular is is being applied perpendicularly to this beam, and it's causing a clockwise rotation. And what did we say before? Clockwise, because of the right hand rule, clockwise is negative, counterclockwise is positive. So the moment there will be 100 newton times two, and it is 200 newton meters clockwise, right? And another way is just to say minus 200 Newton meter. Okay, but the, the reason they haven't done it yet is because they haven't defined, can you see here, they haven't defined um, anti or counterclockwise as positive. Okay? So all they're doing, all they're doing here is the very basics. They're just simply calculating the magnitude of it and giving it a direction. Okay? Uh, what about this one? We have the point of rotation there, okay, and we've got the force there. Now, guys, again, um, the one thing that I want you to be aware of, when you're trying to determine what the moment arm is, let's, let's draw this one here. Okay, got this beam, this curved beam like that. There's our point of rotation O, and we've got this force here, okay? So we need to determine what is the magnitude of this force and what is the direction. Okay? Sorry, what is the magnitude of the moment and what is the direction of the moment. So remember, the force here is given as 50 Newton. Okay, so that's easy. We've got the force there. But now how do we determine the moment arm? Remember, we extend our line of action. Okay? Here's our line of action. And from point, that point O, we draw a line that is perpendicular. We draw a line that is perpendicular to that line of action. And there is our D. Have you got that? So in the figure, in the figure, what is, what is D? D is then this perpendicular distance here. Guys, extend the line of action and draw a line that is perpendicular um, to the line from point O. So that will be equal to 0, 0,75. So what you've got here is 50. That's the magnitude of that force, 50, times 0, 0,75. Then put your fingers in the direction of the force and curl it. Right. So you, your, your wrist might snap off, unfortunately, but you'll get the right answer and you'll pass the test. Okay. Your thumb will need to go into the page and your fingers will need to curl towards this, this point O. And so what you see is this force here is going to cause that this whole beam rotate clockwise. 
All right. All right. Let's move on. Here we have a force acting down, and we've got a point of rotation there, O. How do we determine um, our moment, this, the, the magnitude of our moment? It is force times a perpendicular distance. We've got our force of 400. Okay, I'm just waiting for it to focus there. Now, what will be our perpendicular distance? From the point of rotation to a perpendicular distance to the line of action. There's the line of action of the force, and there is our perpendicular distance. Okay, so one, one tip which I try to give students, they don't always take it. Actually, they almost never take it, so I'm not sure why I'm saying this, but nevertheless, I'm going to say it because hopefully one day you will get it. Ignore the shape of the object. Ignore the shape of the body. The 30 degrees, the 2, the 4, ignore all the, all the, the shape, right? All you need to look at, guys, obviously you need the shape later to get all the information. All you need to look at, guys, when you're trying to determine, when you're trying to draw this, uh, the moment on, the perpendicular distance, just look, just look at the, the force and the line of action of that force and point O. And let, me give, let me show you what I'm trying to say. Okay, is this going to focus? So here we had that, that body which looked something like this. All right. There was my point of rotation right there, and the force came down like that. So we want to determine the magnitude is force times distance. We've got our force. What is our distance? Ignore this body. Ignore it. All you do is, okay, just look at the force and the point. I'm going to redraw it. There's my force, and there's my point. That's all you need to look at. Just look at the force and the point and extend the line of action and draw this force like that. Now you know I need to determine this distance. That, that's my perpendicular distance D. Then you go back to the original and you find, okay, what's that distance? I need to add that distance to that distance, right? I need to add those two distances to get my total D. So in this case, the perpendicular distance, come on, focus now, okay, will be 4 meters plus 2 cos 30. That total distance will be the moment. So that's why they say 400 newton times the, the moment arm, which will be the 4 plus 2 cos 30. That in the brackets there is the moment arm D. So you've got 4 plus 2 cos 30, okay, will give you your moment. And then what is the direction? Well, you can see that force down there is going to cause a rotation like this, clockwise, okay, about point O. Okay, so I think, I think that's good enough. Let me just jump to E. We have a, we have a force of 7 kilonewtons applied horizontally. We want to know what is the moment about... Point o. Again, just look at the force and the point. Don't get confused with the shape of the, of the body. Just look at the force and the point. There is the force. There is the line of action of the force. My D is from the point. I draw a perpendicular line to that line of action. Okay? So what will my D be? It'll be this length here up until the dotted line, which is 4 minus 1. Okay, so it's 3. So it'll be my magnitude of my moment will be 7 times 3. But then can you see that it causes a anti-clockwise? Put my fingers there. My thumb will be pointing upwards, and my fingers will curl towards point O. All right? So that's why... E, you'll have 7 times 4 minus 1, which will give you that, that moment there. Okay? So it is anti-clockwise. Okay. So hopefully uh, these basic examples have helped you. Uh, okay, how about we just quickly look at this example. Here we have um, some kind of uh, beam. Okay. 
this uh, beam or this rod, and we've got four forces, 50, 60, 40, and 20, okay? And we want to find out what is the resultant moment. What is the resultant moment due to all these forces? So what we've been looking at before is we've just been looking at a single force, and we've been calculating the moment due to that single force. But now we've got four forces, and we want to determine what are the moments due to these four forces. So just by looking at this, before we even look at any calculations, um, which ones will cause a moment and which ones will not cause a moment? Okay, well, we can see that 50 will cause a moment because there's point O and 50 is not on the line of... Uh, the point O is not on the line of action of the 50. What about the 60? 60 will not cause a moment because point O is on the line of action of the force. So the, the moment arm for this one will be zero. So there'll be, no mo there'll be no moment. And then for the 40 and the 20, there will be moments because uh, if you draw the line of action of the 20, you'll have a perpendicular distance. If you draw the line of action of 40, you're going to have a perpendicular distance. So three of these four forces will cause moments. So now let's look at 50. By the way, this is how we write it. We say anti-clockwise. We're drawing a, an anti-clockwise circle um, arrow. And we say plus, meaning counterclockwise or anti-clockwise is positive. It's a convention based on the right-hand rule. Okay, I want to remind you, in the previous video, we define the direction using the right-hand rule, meaning that we put our fingers in the direction of the force and we curl it towards the point O. Okay? And in two-dimensional space, the curl of our fingers gives us the sense of direction. So in this case, the curl of the fingers was counterclockwise. Okay? So in two-dimensional space, the curl of the fingers if it's counterclockwise or clockwise, gives us the, the sense of direction. But in three-dimensional space, we do exactly the same thing. We put our fingers in the direction of the force and we curl it towards the point. But then what we need to, in three-dimensional space, the thumb gives us the direction of our moment. Okay? So, but we'll get to the matter of the three-dimensional direction in future videos so in but in two-dimensional space counterclockwise about the point of rotation is positive and what do we say here we say the resultant moment about O MR close brackets O the resultant moment about O equals the sum of FD so it's the sum of all the moments is equal to the resultant moment where have you seen something like that before well, the resultant force, FR, is equal to the sum of the forces. Remember in chapter 2. Okay, so now let's have a look here. Let's look at the moment due to this force. It is 50 is the force. Okay. 50 is the force. And then the moment arm, because the force is perpendicularly applied to this uh, rod, 2 meters will be the moment arm. So we have... 50 times 2. 50 times 2. And why is there a minus there? Because it is going to act clockwise. Okay? Clockwise around about point O. So clockwise, if you, if you put your fingers in the direction of the force, your thumb into the page, you, and you curl your fingers towards point O without your wrist snapping off. Um then you're going to have clockwise motion, a clockwise sense of direction of rotation, which means negative. Then, as you can see here, the 60 is multiplied by zero because the, six, the line of action passes through that point. So there's no moment on. So that's zero. Then 20, if we draw the line of action there, we can see there... That is our moment on. So we need to find out what is that distance. 3 sine 30 will give us our moment on for the, the moment caused by this force 20. So it will be 20 times this distance here. Okay. 
which is 3 sine 30. And they say it's positive. Why? Because that force, if I remember, this force can move up and down like this. If this is the line of action of the force and it's directed in that direction like that, which means it causes a moment, a sense of rotation, counterclockwise, anticlockwise, which is positive. That's why that is positive. Then this 40, if I draw the line of action like that, then, and I look at point O and I draw a line, perpen line perpendicular to the line of action, I'm going to get this distance here. Okay? So I need to go 2 plus 2 plus this distance, whatever it is, which is 3 cos 30. So 2 plus 2 plus 3 cos 30 gives me my D. Okay, so you're going to have 4 plus 3 cos 30. And then you simply add these um, 1, 2, 3, 4 moments up, and you get a resultant moment. MR, 0, resultant moment about O equals... And what do we get here? We get a minus 334 newton meter equals 334 newton meter um, clockwise. All right? So this is a basic example of how to add up multiple moments. So what we're trying to say is that all these forces acting on this rod, the result of all these forces will be a, a moment that is acting in this sense of rotation, a clockwise sense of rotation, and it has a magnitude of 334 Newton. Okay? So I hope that, that helps uh, with some examples. Cheers, guys.